So now let's do, uh, now that we defined the basic uh, uh, ground level uh, uh, machine model of, uh, of what it means for to be, to model uh, like a, a, a system, a distributed or whatever a computing system, uh, uh, let's build on top of that, uh, uh, decide, de define what it means to have a, the protocol, a model of protocol execution. So now we want to execute a protocol. We have a given protocol, which is a piece of code. And you want to execute it in the presence of, uh, uh, of an environment. And uh, now I'm adding to this uh, an adversary, okay? Which is a little bit like the similar from before, but uh, as, as we'll see, uh, uh, it's, it's gonna play out a little bit differently. Uh, so, so, so the way I'm doing it is the following. So, 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 I'm, so the execution of a protocol, right? So, so uh, uh, I have a protocol pi, which is uh, just a piece of code. Uh, and I have uh, uh, a code for an environment, which is the same environment as, as we had before. But right now it's just, again, just a piece of code. Uh, and we have a code for another machine, which is called the adversary. Um, and, um, and I'm going to do now there's going to be an execution uh, of, uh, of, of these three guys. So there's going to be whatever, uh, uh, there is going to be um, uh, the, the, um, the system of machines that corresponds to these three guys is the following. So there is the initial machine is going to be the environment, just formally. The environment is the initial machine. And there is going to be some control function Right, that is going to be a control function which is parameterized by uh, uh, the protocol and the adversary, maybe the environment also. Uh, and, and, and how is it going to look, right? So I already said that the initial machine is the environment. So first the environment runs, right? Let's just draw it like this. Uh, there is a single the instance of the environment. Let's say it has uh, identity zero, okay? And now uh, um, the environment can do a bunch of things. Uh, actually, not too many things. So the first thing in the first activating activation that it does, it has to actually activate uh, uh, the uh, uh, the adversary. Okay, let's call it ID one. Okay, and then uh, what it can do, it can actually now it can actually uh, write the only thing, the only external writes that it can do. It can do external writes either to the adversary, to the set the input table of the adversary, or it can write to the input tapes of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of machines that run Pi, right? And furthermore, the, the only thing it can do, it can write to the input and it can ge uh, uh, generate all of them with the same SID. So in particular, it's, it's, it's restricted to activate a single instance of a protocol because by definition, they all have the same SID, different PIDs, so, uh, so they, they all uh, 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 form an instance of a protocol, okay? So this is what the environment can do whenever it gets control, right? So you can write inputs uh, 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 to these guys, okay? Yeah? What's the point of separating the environment and the adversary? You, 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 you'll see. So, so, so before I didn't, right? Before I actually had the environment as similar, and I'm actually putting in the adversary. Uh, um, it is convenient, but uh, in, in technically convenient, and uh, but it's not necessary. Okay, you 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 you'll see in a bit. Um, it's also kind of uh, historically people thought about having an, an, a, a protocol, an adversary, the environment, and in, in different definitions, it, it's 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 important that they're separate. Uh, um, it's there, but. But you see why I do it here. It's, a, it's, it's going to be convenient. Um, the environment can do this, can actually give inputs to different uh, uh, to parties, and can generate parties as it goes along. And, uh, and now I'm, I need to say what these guys can do and what uh, uh, this guy can do, OK? So, um, so these guys, uh, uh, what can they do? They can invoke subroutines. I mean, say, uh, write to, to, to input tapes of other machines, if you want whatever they want, right? Um, and uh, uh, they can uh, write 
send messages uh, to uh, the adversary, to the say the communi incoming communication tapes of the adversary, right? So they can talk to their subroutines. They can send uh, uh, out, yes, you know, outputs. I mean, write to the subroutine output tape of the environment, uh, and uh, and they can again send, send their own subroutines. They can write to the to the incoming uh, communication tape of the adversary. They cannot talk to each other directly. These guys uh, are the same rules as these guys. So they can also uh, uh, invoke subroutines, etc. They can write to their uh, 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 the guys, and they can also actually write uh, uh, kind of, they don't need to be, they, they can write to, uh, to, to subroutine output tapes, tapes of everyone, um, not to the environment, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so, 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 so they can write to the, in, to the uh, subroutine output tapes of everybody, which is uh, kind of uh, 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 a subroutine or subsidiary of, of this protocol. Right, so I define what it means to be a subroutine of, 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 of a machine. So you can say transitively a subsidiary of a machine is a, the transitive closure of a subroutine. And a, and a subroutine of a protocol instance is anything that's subroutine of somebody there. And subsidiary of a protocol instance is a transitive closure of that. So all the machines down here, etc. cetera. Uh, they can all talk to each other, but they cannot talk outside uh, uh, their, their whatever subgraph. Um, and uh, well, I'll say in a minute why. Um, so that's what they can do. Uh, but what can the adversary do? The adversary can uh, give outputs to the environment whenever it wants, and it can write to the incoming communication tapes of the parties. So essentially, all the communication between the parties goes through the adversary. That's what's going on, okay? So the, all the communication, they, they cannot talk directly, they can talk only via the adversary, okay? And that's it, and now they can do, now they can run, and at some point the execution ends when the environment stops, as we said, uh, and then the output to the output of the environment, okay? And you can say the environment can actually have initial input or it can be uh, incorporated in its code, it doesn't matter. Initial, there is initial input to the environment and it outputs whatever. Okay? So this is the model of, of executing protocol pi with environment E and adversary A. So, but, but you don't want to, to uh, kind of also to kind of uh, 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 restrict ourselves to thinking about these guys as different parties over a network and this thing over a network. Uh, um, we can think of this as this can be different processes uh, on, on the same machine or in the same cluster. Uh, uh, and, you know, this can be different modulo, modules of an operating system and, uh, and the communication of them is somehow controlled uh, uh, um, either by the adversary or not. So you can think of, of uh, uh, communication like uh, um, input and output, kind of like the subroutine output and input. Uh, first, it's part of uh, the APIs. It's going to be part of the API. That's part of the kind of the functionality. And also, this is kind of trusted in the sense that uh, I think somebody asked me before. Uh, uh, th this is communication goes directly, right? So when this ma uh, this machine writes to this machine, immediately this machine gets activated of this machine. The environment doesn't get in the way, and doesn't even necessarily know that this has happened, right? However, when this goes through the adversary, then the adversary may talk to the environment, then the environment gets in the way, it knows what's going on. So there is some communication that goes on behind the, uh, uh, the back of the environment, some communication that goes on through the environment. Okay, so, so, uh, so the, each one of those can capture something else, okay? Um, okay, but anyways, so this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, um, that, that's the model of, 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 of protocol execution, okay? And uh, as I said, the rules are kind of enforced by the control function, right? As I said, these guys can write this, these guys can write this, and it's controlled by, controlled by the control function. Um, um, so, so things to note. Uh, so this model is really very rudimentary. The, the, the point is to make it rudimentary as simple as possible. Uh, so, uh, 
they said that the parties communicate only via the adversary, so a priori there's no convenient or, or, or manageable uh, uh, medium for it to actually communicate. Um, and these things don't exist here. For instance, you know, in, in, we like to talk about party corruptions, you know, so, so, so you know, we want the adversary of the environment to be able to control parties to say, you know, I'm running my protocol where some of the parties are going to be bad, and they're going to be malicious, right? So I'm going to capture that. I didn't even have any way to capture that because they, I'm running the protocol, so everybody here is running the protocol. How am I going to capture the fact that some of these guys could be malicious, and I don't know who? Or, or, or some of the components of my operating system may be corrupted. Uh, uh, so I'm going to be able to have to capture that otherwise. I will do it later. Uh, but uh, right now I don't want to do it because I want to keep everything simple. Um, okay. Uh, and there's one kind of little uh, uh, quirk that I have to add is that in a minute, I'm going to have to talk about emulation. That you know, I'm going to take. Uh, uh, I'm going to say the environment doesn't know if it talks to these guys or some other guys because this protocol emulates another guy. So uh, um, I'm going to have to 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 give some mechanism to cheat the environment because right now the environment kind of the way I describe things, the environment writes to this guy, so it knows uh, uh, who it's writing to, and if this guy is writing to the environment, it actually knows who wrote to it. And I cannot actually change it to some other code because the environment will see, kind of. So, so I have to kind of, in, in, those, in, in those links between the environment and, and, and the parties, I want to be able to kind of, kind of change the identities just in a technical way to not the environment see. And this, the control function is going to do it for me when I switch from one protocol to the other. But it's just technicality. 